Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we talking about today? Well, I'm going to be going over the GSSR, which thankfully, because we play the NA version of Fago, we already know what's going to be on our banner, plus also the Korean version actually just did a Twitter post, and they actually said, here's our GSSR for New Year's, by the way. So, we know that this is how our GSSR is going to end up looking like. So, I'm going to go over it give some opinions on it i this is at this point the third time i've tried to record this one there's a lot to go through with it and the first original version of this video was an hour and 30 minutes long so uh there was a and i still feel like i was not able to cover every single unit on it near the end of it i got really tired because i was recording for so long so i'm just gonna focus on the big ones and that's basically it <laughs> for it I can't go over every single unit, but I at least can point out the, the best ones. The ones that I think are the best, and the ones I've seen other people consider the best as well. And that's going to be today's video. So, before we get into it, just a couple reminders for the GSSR in general. It is 15 quarts. If you want to... It has to be paid quarts no matter what. If you want to get the... If you want to spend the least amount of money to get the paid quarts, it will require you to buy two packs. One is the $11.99 pack and then the $3.99 pack. The reason is is that you need paid quartz and no pack gives you exactly 15 paid quartz. One of them gives you 11 and then the other one gives you 5. And that's the way that they've decided to do it for, for whatever reason. Uh, so those are the packs you're going to have to buy. If you're free to play, do not feel pressured into buying into it. Stay free to play the way you want to be. Play the game you want to do and if you can't afford it, then it's perfectly okay. You can let others... You can, you can see GSSR for what it is, which is someone has to kind of keep the lights on. You can let people who can actually afford to keep the game moving on make the sacrifice of giving the game money, and you can just continue playing it and ignore it where you can. It can be very tough, so just you know, hang strong on that one. And then next, and this is also very important, even though I'm only going to be focusing on very specific banners, the best way to actually enjoy GSSR is to find your favorite unit and then summon for them. That's it. So even though uh, most people are going to end up summoning for Arts Offensive Three Knights, because it has Melusane and Muramasa on it. If you actually care about one of, like, for example, if you cared about uh, Saber Okita the most, and you wanted a 1 in 5 chance, which honestly is the best chance you're going to get out of Saber Ostelfo for just 15 quarts, um, then you should go for it. I, I don't think you... I think the, the best way to enjoy this game is to actually play with the units you like, and the GSSR is a chance for you to potentially get a unit you like. Now, if there's no unit that you feel super strong about, or you already have your favorite unit from what you can see in here, then you can kind of go into and go like, okay, let me look at the units themselves and see which ones are good and kind of pick from there. That's how I think you should approach GSSR. I do not think that you should actually be always going for the absolute best. It just so happens to be that the absolute best units in this case are also fan favorites. It just works out that way. But if you're someone who's definitely like, oh man, I really, really like <laughs> Oconi over here, but the three knights is just too good to pass up. I still say you should probably go for Oconi because you care about her way more. And I feel like you would yourself be happier with potentially getting them over getting the big unit. But maybe that's just me. At the end of the day, it is your choice. I can only tell you what I think and that's it. And from then on, go with God and I will, I will support whatever you decide to do. So... Of these banners, there's 14 of them. You can only ever summon on one of them, which is why the cho choice is so hard. Uh, there's been exactly one time in the entire game's history where you were able to summon on more than one banner. Uh, that's also not 100% true, because there is a later banner where it will be 30 paid quartz and 15 quartz. But back in the day, when it was these style of banners, where it was 14 banners, there was a mistake that made it so that you could actually summon on GSSRs more than once. <laughs> Uh, and that was a bug, and I think the bug only lasted maybe an hour, or maybe even less than an hour, but they definitely took the game down and to be like, okay, okay, fixing the issue, uh, we're not refounding anyone saying, could say quartz, so if you summon them to GSSR, congratulations, <laughs> you summon them to GSSR, um, and that was the one year it's ever happened, and it's never happened since, I think, so... Something to keep in mind if you're someone who's like, maybe it'll happen again. It's unfortunately never happened on NA. 
Uh, which is a damn shame, because I was definitely waiting for it to happen on NA, hoping for God that out of all the mistakes to happen on NA, please let it be this one. <laughs> but unfortunately, it never did. Okay, now in terms of the actual banners themselves, the big banners on this one are the Arts Offensive Three Knights. This banner is absolutely insane. This is, was the most picked banner on JP when it came out by a large margin. And the reason is because it has Muramasa and it has uh, Melusane on it. And then the next ones, the one that the next ones I want to point out are the ones that have the actual support units on it, which are the ones you would use for Buster, Quick, um, Arts, and uh, Miscellaneous. I guess is the best way to describe them. Uh, you have Koyanskaya, which is in Buster Offensive MP4 Cavalry's one. We have Buster Offensive MP Extra one, which has Oberon in it. We have Support MP one, which has Castoria in it. And it also has Miss Crane, which I feel is uh, a little bit of an underrated support unit, as well as Simi, or uh, Simi Yi, aka Reigns, and Van Gogh is, I guess, technically a support unit. But in terms of the big ones, it is Castoria is the big one here, and then you have two really good side supports that are used for some other kind of interesting team builds and stuff like that. And then in support NP2, you have Merlin, you have Scotty, and you have technically Himiko. Um, with Scotty being the big one, Merlin also being a big one, even though he doesn't work with Oberon, I still think he's a very good unit and is also uh, a loved unit at the same time, so good to kind of keep track of. And Himiko, I think, is in a super, super interesting buster support unit. Uh, if you ever got her to NP5, it'd be kind of insane. But those are the kind of those are the units that feature the sports that are your main driving force in Fago. So I figured those are the ones that we should focus on. Uh, at the end of the near the end, after I'm done talking about them, I'll kind of quickly go over the other other dudes just to be like, here's my piece on them, here's what I think about them. But let's talk about the big ones first. So. Let's start with the actual big one, the one that everyone on JP summoned on and what most people on NA are going to be summoning on, Arts Offensive NP3 Knights. Um, so this one has Muramasa, Bride Nero, Benny Enma, Void Shiki, uh, Saber Summer, Jean Summer, not the, the Archer, obviously, um, Ryoma, Lancer Ryoma, and Melusane. Uh, this is an insane banner. There are basically no bad units on this one. In the previous video I did, I did mention that it would be a big bummer if you got Void Shiki, and then someone who was a big Void Shiki fan said, imagine talking crap about Void Shiki when you haven't done the proper research. So I decided to do the proper research, and I looked it up, and then said, okay, let's see, maybe there's something I'm missing. I looked it up, and seeing how she is currently doing in Fago NA, um, and for what I could see, it was like, yeah, if you have a kaleidoscope, then technically you can farm with her. Um, they've done better than she was in the past. Back in the old days, um, when the game first started, she was a terrible unit. Absolutely dog water unit. The reason is is that she has an instant kill. Um, an instant kill it just isn't very good. And then later on, when art slooping became a thing, instant kill actively screws you over. <laughs> if you're trying to art sloop, the reason is is that you don't get AMP gain from it. Or that's how it is supposed to work there are some units that can bypass it which is summer kiara she has an instant kill but she's able to get mp gain from it and two months ago on jp at least for, as far as i can tell from the research this is the, what the guy who told me to go look up i saw that they had actually fixed it for shiki and she's actually able to legitimately loop without needing a kaleidoscope which is what we can currently do on the na side of the game so that actually changes my opinion about her being like a bummer to her being to actually being like oh this is actually going to be a really really solid unit in the <laughs> in the future <laughs> just not now i don't think they've uh implemented it yet if they have please let me know um it would have been nice if the person who said hey, maybe do some research, had actually just told me <laughs> if anything had been different. Uh, it would have really cut down on the research time, but uh, he did not. So I can only assume that currently on the NA side of uh, Fago, Shiki is, requires a kaleidoscope because she doesn't have the bug fixed yet. But on JP, she's definitely much better now. Um, that makes her That turns her from a dog water unit to a usable unit, and that's good enough for me. That definitely makes it a little bit better for her being a unit on here. Also, she just has so many strengthenings, I think. Uh, I think when I checked, it's like two. Like this one, we're going to get at a later date. We don't have it yet. This one, I think we currently have. Um, and then one to her NP. That's a 
decent amount of sand quartz right there. <laughs> it's always nice when your unit can give you back a little bit of sand quartz for their strengthenings. It is, it uh, feels pretty nice to me anyway. So she was, in my mind, the weakest unit on this banner. And I think on the NA side of the game, she would still probably be the one I would consider the weakest on this banner. But it's one with, like, a, an asterisk on it, on it. Where it's like, in two years, you're going to be able to actually do fun things with her. And I think that's uh, at least worth mentioning now. For the people who are waiting, willing to wait two years. I'm willing to wait two years for a unit to eventually turn good. I was ready to do that for Mount Nobu. Um, unfortunately, I never was able to get her. Next, uh, we have Ryoma, who is probably the next one who is the second... Not the second week. It's, more, it's really weird to say weak on here because he's still good. The only negative to say about Ryoma is that there are other Lancers, four-star Lancers for arts that are good. So it kind of turns into this thing of like, do you really need Lancer Ryoma? And as someone who is using him and having fun with him, I can say, yeah, of course. I love Lancer Ryoma. <laughs> he is really solid at what he does. And thanks to Guda Guda, you know that he'll always be a featured unit on Guda Guda. So I'm perfectly happy with him and I think he's a really solid unit. But Yanma single target um arts unit for saber really really solid she's got a little bit of a funky uh skill set that makes her different you have to use her different from a lot of other ones where it's kind of like a a support back and forth but also one that is debuffing the actually it's easier for me to just show you something like this here where it's like oh yeah you increase the party's attack their buff removal resistance you charge them up a little bit and you how you you recover their hp and then you recover your opponent's hp by a little bit but it's not much because a thousand for us is a decent chunk and a thousand for the enemy means nothing it, it actively means something she has an npc on her skill too and then she also has bonus against chaotic and evil so if you ever fight someone who's chaotic and evil then she'll be able to do a lot of damage to him for sure kiyohime if there's ever a boss fight where you fight kiyohime you'll be able to target target it down pretty uh effectively next we have bright nero who is kind of similar to benny enma in which she is uh, a single target art saber but she's more support focused like to a crazy degree for some reason they decided to give her first skill stars in heaven which is a 40 percent mp generation rate which i always thought was a super good skill before they buffed it and then they decided to buff it to also give it an mp gauge charge <laughs> which is really good her third skill also gives defense heals hp and then makes them do more damage against sky attribute enemies her second skill is also one that can be targeted to anyone, so it can go to her, but it can go to any of the allies as well, and it gives them 40% attack and star crit star generation rate. And her Noble Phantasm hits really hard. This is another single target saber, because apparently they love me, that I have and I've been using her for years. I always like having a challenge quest that or a boss fight that requires you to use a saber because she's always in my party lineup and she has never failed me she can do a lot of big hit dps but then if things are like to the back against the wall she can also support which is really nice and i appreciate another single target unit we have saber summer over here who has been a year one unit who was built solid back then and is still solid now they buffed the skill for absolutely no reason she didn't need a buff i think it's actively a little bit of a dumb thing that they buffed her because I am not lying when I've said since year one when she released for the first summer, she's been as good as she is then, if not better, thanks to the new arts meta that has gone around. Not new arts meta at this point. The arts meta that came with Castoria. Um, she's just been a super good unit. And this is another unit that I have <laughs> and I own and I can attest to you. She's soloed entire bosses by herself. It's even been to the case where they took out all my supports. And as long as I had her, I was still had a chance to win because she has the ability to heal herself by 5,000 on a cooldown of 4. Her NP makes it so she has a 70% chance to reduce her MP gauge by 1. If you're going through and uh, if you're going 3 arts, it's almost always guaranteed that she will be able to charge up her NP gauge, even if with no supports. The reason is, is that she gets a 20% NP back regardless of anything. Really good unit. As long as you have... <laughs> really good i cannot undersell her enough i absolutely love her she's another single target unit that i always use <laughs> when always happy to use um especially because mine's mp5 but even when she was mp1 she was an mvp for me um gene archer kind of similar to ryoma has the same issue of like there are four star arts archers that are also good um but it's gene it's gene summer why wouldn't you like gene summer this first outfit alone is enough to make me want her. 
So there you go. And then the big heavy hitter units, which are the reason for the season, the reason most people will be summoning on this. Um, we got Muramasa and we got Melusane. We'll go. I'll go first with Muramasa. I don't need to show you what he does. The man's insane. He's an AOE saber that, with enough support, at times was able to do enough damage uh, as a single target <laughs> archer. Not archer, single target saber. Uh, I remember a friend of mine who had his Muramasa, and he's like, yeah, I use him to fight mobs that he doesn't even have type advantage over for. That's how stupid his damage is and how big I can pump my boy. He is the poster boy for fate, so of course they were going to make him good. Freaking Emiya has been buffed to all the nines since the game came out, so of course <laughs> when Shiro actually came to the game, they were going to make a stupid unit around him, and Muramasa is that unit. And Melusane, I've had at this point multiple videos where I've said she was good. I've had a video of me trying to summon for her uh, where I went insane with my brother. I'm, during the Kotunguska uh, event, I was able to grind up a bunch of Bond uh, Saint Quartz. And I still used them on Melusane knowing that the banner that featured her was absolute garbage. And was giving me nothing but <laughs> bad, unfeatured four uh, craft essences. But Melusane was just that good that I still chased her. Melusane is an absolute unit. Uh, the best Lancer in the game, likely on NA right now. Uh, you can ask anyone who was, like, <laughs> farming Koyanskaya. And they will tell you, yeah, occasionally I had to watch out because Melusane would t turn one her. And I didn't need her to go that hard into the paint. I needed her to actually to like calm down and not do that much damage to her. She's absolutely worth having and worth owning. Uh, if you don't know about her specific gimmick, this gimmick of hers is also really, really fun to use as a unit. So not only is she like a meta, crazy strong unit, she's also a unit that has a noble phantasm that can go from hitting one enemy to... Uh, hitting all enemies. So she switches from an AoE to a single target. And when she's an, a single target, it's an arts NP. When she is a, an AoE unit, it is a buster. Um, she's a buster unit for all intents and purposes. <laughs> and she has two buster cards and two arts cards. They really designed her amazing. Um, she also has a, <laughs> this skill gives her a 100% NP gauge. She, she's dumb. I don't, I, I, nothing else to say here. Most people are going to be summoning on this banner. I think this banner is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, a 2 and 8 chance of either pulling Muramasa or Melusane. And if you fail, you get a, a unit that is still really good. Um, both in the future and currently. I think that makes this kind of the banner to go for like again i said previously shiki's the only one that is probably the weakest on here and that's only because of her glitch if they ever decide or if i don't know this again feel free to correct me on this if i'm wrong about this if they've already corrected on the na side of the game i'm not aware of that but when they do that she will be very solid she won't be as good as muramasa because muramasa is muramasa but that will make her usable and actually good and from the video that i saw that used her and um avenger chloe which is another summer unit that you should really be looking forward to in the future um i was impressed with what she could do i would that like the comment section was filled with people going oh my god i used to pray for nights like this shiki actually usable <laughs> shiki with 50 percent np gain i never thought i would see with 50 percent starting np i never thought i'd see the day it's an amazing thing to behold. But yeah, that's this banner. This is if you have no other uh, earthly bonds to any of the other banners and you're just going, I want to summon for the best, it's three knights. Unless you d badly need one of the supports to support them. That's it. Next. All right. This That was basically the main big one. This, these others should go much easier from this point on. Um, let's look at the one that has Koyanskaya. So this is a one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. A one in seven chance of getting Koyanskaya. I would actually consider this a two out of seven. The reason is is that Arjuna Altar is on here, and Arjuna Altar is still crazy insane. Um, so a two in seven chance of getting a super top tier unit. I think you could add in an additional. I really would call this a three out of seven because I love Raiko, but that's a personal thing. I'm putting away personal biases. 
I think Raikou's really good. I just currently on the NA side, we have to wait for her JP buff. Um, for her to be able to stand a little bit closer to Arjuna Altar, just because she isn't currently there on the NA side. Um, so yeah, Koyanskaya is the support buster. For support for buster, she's really good. She's an amazing unit. Uh, is a 1 out of 7 chance. The problem with this banner is... Is that... You know how I said here, hey, if you miss Muramasa or you miss Melusane, at least you got a really good unit? Ah, uh, it's going to be a real toss-up for Buster Offensive. Skandar is not good. Uh, Cleopatra is actively maybe one of the worst units in the game. She needs a buff. Please buff my girl. Ilya has a single target caster, which I think is very good. And then based off of the most recent Lotto, where a lot of people were saying, I was so happy to use my... Uh, Ilya because she came in clutch for that event. I think there is worth on having a single target caster But I just don't think a lot of people put that much weight into it. So uh, I'll say I'll give that's my two cents on it is I would consider her like a good get But most people would not be happy if they were going for coins Gaia and they got Ilya instead Arjuna Altar, absolutely amazing unit to get. If you missed Koyan's Gaia, but you got Arjuna Altar, you could at least say, like, well, damn, I didn't get the support that buffs him, but I, at least I got the, one of the best Berserkers in the game. Hijikata is the Pickle Man. Um, I have an active running dislike for Hijikata. Mine is NP2. I was about to use him for the Ivan Raid, and then the Ivan Raid no shoped, which I feel like is the world itself telling me stop putting all your hopes on Hijikata. And Raiko, like I said, later on on JP, she gets a buff that is really good. That makes it so that she went back to the status of being as used as she was back in the day. The problem is, is that Arjuna Altar is just too... This is the buff. The problem is, is that Arjuna Altar just does so much more than her um, that it makes it kind of hard to compete. Now, I've, if I remember correctly, feel free to correct me on this because this is the nitty-gritty of it and I don't pay attention to this stuff usually, is that after she got her buff... She could occasionally outpower Arjuna Altar, but that does not mean she's better than Arjuna Altar. It just means that sometimes she was able to put up numbers, which mean that that which took her from why would you ever use her over Arjuna Altar, but putting her into okay, you can actually just use her if you like her because she's gonna be good enough. She's gonna do you right, and it's Mama, so of course. So yeah, that's the way I kind of look at this banner, is that uh, Coin Sky is your main get. Arjuna Altar is an amazing dude to get for a second, and I would also put Raiko on that list, but it's going to really depend on the person. I've also seen a lot of people just not like Raida Servants in general, and I think those people are wrong. But I do try and acknowledge them from time to time as a like, hey, maybe if it's a, an acquired taste for some... Um, and the rest of these, it's 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 a miss. If you if you are going here and you're going, I can't wait to get Koi and Skaya, and then you don't you fail to get her and you get Cleo, you're gonna be so so sad. There is gonna be someone on here who's gonna see Gold Assassin, and they're gonna light up because they're gonna go Koi and Skaya, Koi and Skaya, Koi and Skaya, and then it's gonna be Cleo, and then they're gonna uninstall the game. And then that is the it. That is it. We never see them again. <laughs> it takes a strong will to not uninstall the game if you get spooked by Cleo from the Gold Assassin when you were expecting Koi and Skaya. You have to remember that. Not only do you have to win the coin toss that says, oh my god, I have to win the one, two, through. Uh, let me see, the seven, the two out of seven chances of getting a Gold Assassin card to show up, and then that I have to win a coin toss that says that unit is either going to be Cleo or Coins Gaia. It's just too risky. It, it's too risky for my blood, but it is what it is. Next, uh, Buster Evans of NP Extra 1. This is, has Oberon. This is a 1 in 5 chance of Oberon. If you do not get Oberon, how bummed are you going to be if you don't get Oberon? Um, for most people, a lot of people who are also fans of Summer Abbey, I have her at NP2 myself. She's not very good. She kind of needs a buff. That doesn't change the fact that Abby is a very well-liked character, though. And I remember, specifically, when she first released, a lot of people on JP were like, how could you do this to Abby? Like, Abby fans are actively going, what did you do to her? Especially with how good they made Summer Kiara, it felt unfair to make her just so weak in comparison. It's very sad. Hopefully they continue to buff her, because I really do like Abby as a character, and I'm sad that she's not better. It seems like her kit looks like in a specific way that, hey, you could maybe someday see her being good, but as it is now, she just needs more buffs. I like uh, I like Okita Alter. Uh, John Jean the Arc. 
Jalter, um, she's good. The problem is, is that she hasn't been buffed. So back in the day, she was the strongest DPS in the game. Um, like actively during the Merlin meta, she was kind of that girl. As long as you had her, you basically always won. Like her and Merlin was an instant win. It's either her and Merlin or Kualter and Merlin. And since then, they haven't really buffed her in any kind of significant way. Uh, so a lot of her skills are just kind of old. Compared to a lot of like DPS servants who do maybe a little bit more, she just isn't doing enough. So she could use a little bit more buffs and the spirit and more costumes probably. She didn't have, she never got that idol costume. Maybe someday. That's at least been my understanding from people who have had Jolter and who are Jolter fans is that yes, she had her time in the sun, but they could definitely buff her a little bit more. And then next, I like uh, Lion King Summer, but not everyone does. I think she's a pretty fun unit to use, but I can also understand maybe some people just like not liking the gimmick and also she is a little bit weak on the damage side uh which is a very fair thing to say if your aoe unit doesn't actually kill everyone in the aoe with their aoe it kind of defeats the purpose of having them for looping if they're not able to actually effectively destroy the entire um field that they're fighting so yeah a one in five chance at oberon uh, I think if the the big miss here is likely Summer Abbey, where if I was summoning on here, would I be... I don't know. For me personally, if I was going for Oberon for this specific banner, and I got Jolter, I got Summer Lion King, and I got Akita Alter, I'd be like, okay, it's not Oberon, but at least I got someone that was new or someone that I liked. Uh, the reason I wouldn't feel that way for some rabbies because I already have her MP2. And I also would not summon on this banner because I also already have Oberon, but... Uh, that's the th kind of mindset I'm trying to put myself in. Oberon is 100% worth trying for a 1 in 5 chance. It just kind of depends on your box and how you kind of built for it. I will say that I would still kind of focus in on other the, the main supports and your DPS and then go for Oberon. And if you already have those kind of like solid in lock, then it makes sense to kind of go for Oberon in that case. So yeah, a 1 in 5 in Oberon. Not, not the worst. Not the worst case. Um, next, support NP1. We got Castoria up in here. I don't know, there's not much I can say about Castoria. Cause she's the number one arts uh, caster <laughs> in the game. She's the number one art support in general. Uh, absolutely rocked the game, changed everything. Arts used to be kind of a joke or a, a, a thing where people would go, No, you don't understand. Arts is so good. I love Tomomo and her giving me zero NP. You just don't understand it. You just need the right craft essences. You need the right build. You need the stall. And she completely changed that over her head. And uh, she's been a force to be reckon reckoned with still. Um, you can see the entire challenge quest videos. Not only is she good for like looping, but during challenge quest, her NP is amazing. You can see me and my brother just brute force challenge quest just because we had Castoria on the team. She's that good. Um... So is a 1 in 5 chance for her good to go? I would say so. Especially because this banner is not bad. If I f miss and I get Reigns, I get Miss Crane, I get Shihuan D, and I get Van Gogh, I would still be pretty happy with that, to be honest. The only case I wouldn't be happy about is that if I already had one of these units, in which case I'd be like, okay, I'm a little bit angry that it was a dupe. But I think Reigns is a really solid writer support. I think that Miss Crane is a really uh, good support for... Casters, I would still say that in general, she's one of those like support units who are like, it's really good after you have one of the main general supports. It's kind of one of those things. She also has this ability here, which is the, um, she has a 100% MP charge, which is good. And then she has the ability to go to the back with her NP, but it does require 20 crit stars, but it's okay. One of these abilities actually does give crit stars, but it's depending on how many costume own owning allies you have currently out on the field except for herself um so i think a really fun support i would be pretty happy with it um a one in five for castori is not bad and if you miss i still think you get a really good unit um yeah i i, I would not again i think this is actually probably the second best banner on on here if I were to look at everything, I would be, for my, I guess for, this is like a personal, personal preference thing, but I would be happy with any one of these units if I was summoning on support NP1. Next, support NP2. 
Um, I think this is kind of similar to support MP1, except for Sherlock Holmes is just not as good as Shi Huan Di, but I still think Sherlock as a character is cool, so there is that. Um, Scotty's on here, Merlin is on here, Ahimiko is on here. Scotty, until Summer comes out and we get uh, Summer Scotty, Scotty's the only real quick support that we have. Um still solid her np got recently buffed to be really good it was it came in really clutch during the raids i found out a lot of people didn't strengthen their scotty's np which feels insane to me but thankfully that event they were like oh wait i should go do that and she was amazing for it uh it's an amazing np now merlin the only negative that he has is that oberon has an ability here that's called fuck you merlin uh, has it right here. It says question mark, question mark, question mark, but after you clear Avalon Le Fay, it just shows up and says, fuck you, Merlin, where it's a debuff where it's a 500% chance to reduce the buffs, uh, the buff success rate of Merlin allies. <laughs> it just actively makes them worse. <laughs> so, and I've checked this because my brother told me, I thought, I assumed that also applied to Lady Avalon. It doesn't apply to her. She's not Merlin. <laughs> It's really only targeted towards him, which is sad. Uh, the one thing that she has still going for him is that Tamamo is a fantastic support unit, but she's all offense-based. She has no defense. Merlin is still really good on defense, especially because he has um, this second ability, which is just an invincibility on legs, which is really good. And then his Noble Phantasm, still very solid, still very good. Um could probably use a buff maybe i mean i'm starting to kind of see the ideas it's probably just because of how many team comps use oberon and how many times it feels like ah but you can't use them together it feels like merlin kind of gets pushed out but i still think that you would be you should be able to use him and he's still a solid buster support and yeah if you were to summon on this trying to go for merlin or scotty and how bummed would you be if you didn't get either of them i would still say you'd be pretty happy the only miss here would probably be Sherlock Holmes, but he would definitely be one of those like, ah, at least it's somebody new or it's Sherlock. I still feel like you'd be like, ah, I like the character enough. Or maybe you hate the character. Maybe you're Moriarty and you hate Sherlock Holmes. But I still feel like you would be like, ah, okay, good enough. Uh, Super Ryan's an insane uh, uh, archer. He's one of my favorites to use out next to uh, uh, Saber Summer over here. And then Himiko is also a really solid um, buster support unit. Not on the same level as like Tamamo and Merlin, but still really fun to use. And I've had a lot of fun using her in team comps uh, since she's come out. Um, really good unit. Uh, and yeah, those are the big banners that actually have the support units on it. Just to go very quickly over the rest of them in case you have... You want my opinion on these other ones? Here's what I feel like. Quick offensive, I would really like, I really like Skahawk, and I like Okita, both of the Okitas on here, and I also like Say. I don't know enough about Ostelfo, so I can't comment on him. For quick offensive NP4 Calvaries, I think Assassin Kama is almost worth it alone to go on this banner. It is a 1 in 5 shot of getting uh, Assassin Kama, which is really good, especially if you love Kama. If you miss Kama, though, get ready, because again... If the gold assassin shows up, it's between her and Mysterious Heroine X, and Mysterious Mysterious Heroine X is good, but she's not comma. <laughs> is the best way I say it's not as dire as the Cleo versus Koyanskaya, but you're definitely feeling hurt afterwards and you're going, oh well at least Mysterious Heroine X is cool. And if you're a big fan of Mysterious Heroine X, then at least if you don't get her, you at least get Kama. So you go, ah damn, it could have been her. Ah well, at least I have Kama, the best single target <laughs> assassin in the game. And I, I will definitively say that on at least the Fago NA side. I still use her to this day, even though I barely use Quick. Whenever I'm having trouble with a boss who can be hit by Charm, I pull up all reliable and Kama gets me through the fight, no problem. Uh, but yeah, Akoni as a single target caster. And um, most recently I found an actual use where I, I actually said to myself, on our video, I was like, when are you ever going to use a single target quick caster? Most people will feel like that, so it's easy to skip her. And then the very next event I said, damn, you know what would hit real quick? A single target quick caster. <laughs> so I was a little bit egg on my face on that one. 
And uh, Serious Heroin X Alter is very cute, but she also has no defense and she dies in one hit. Quick Offensive NP Extra. I think this is another solid banner with the only misses really being Kagekyo. This, if you're summoning on this banner, it's likely because you're going for Doman. You have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1 out of 7 chance of getting Doman. And if you miss Doman, you're only really bummed out if you get Kagekyo. Is what I would say, because if you miss Doman and you get Melt instead, I, I would still go, hey, it's Melt. That's good enough for me. Uh, Shoutouts to the one Karen fan who really hardly, big hard time, bigged up their girl. So now that I can say for a definitive, she's good and can loop. Uh, Arts Defense of NP4 Calvaries. This is a, this is I think the ban one of the banners my brother wants to summon on. This has Leo, uh, both Da Vinci's the writer and the caster Shikabu. It has Shuden and it has uh, Musashi. Uh, pretty solid banner. Uh, the only real misses on here are probably Da Vinci and Shuden, but both of them I love, so I would still consider that good if you got them. It would require deeper conversation to have. Also, my brother has a specific video related to poison to be released when the Fago arcade event is coming out so look forward to that and so even though i had some specific things to say about how shooting feels really underpowered currently he told me to stop and wait until the Fago arcade <laughs> event came out and he would do a video explaining poison stuff <laughs> so please wait for that video and i will do the same he did one video. I'm hyping it up every single time. There's a poison unit. <laughs> I'm gonna be hyping it up in the background. What does this mean for the future of Lacosta? <laughs> Get ready for the video. <laughs> Arts events of MP extra. This is another kind of insane banner because this has one, two, three. Three AOE arts units that are insane. Um, Summer comma space star Summer Kiara. Uh, this is a three and six shots of getting one of the best AOE. <laughs> Uh, the, the, this could have been four technically, but unfortunately, um, Musashi is in the next, is in uh, four Calvaries. So, worth summoning on if you care deeply about one of these. The only thing I'll say, and then also if you miss them, I would still say you would be pretty happy with any of the results. Um, the one thing I will say is that um, Summer Ibuki, which is coming up kind of makes a little bit of like going for specific basically if you're going for summer abuki maybe don't worry so much about an aoe arts unit at the moment you're kind of going to be kind of be solid <laughs> in the upcoming uh months from now uh buster offensive mp3 knights this one has abuki regular arthur uh ishtar moriarty uh, Brunhilder and Romulus Quernus. This is basically a one in six shot of getting a Buki, or ex unless you're that one guy who's really uh, hyped for Arthur, in which case this is a one in six shot of getting Arthur. Um, yeah, the only bummer here is that if you're a big fan of Ibuki, is that you're going to get Arthur, and Arthur is no Ibuki. The comparative of their power level, you know what the difference between them is? Ibuki has. Uh, Ibuki has. An MP charge for one. <laughs> oh no, he does. He has a 20%. He has a 20% MP charger. She has a 50%. So that's all I need to say on that one. Buster Offensive, uh, three knights. Uh, this is a one in five chance of potentially getting Gilgamesh, Irish Goggle, uh, Tamamo, or Musashi. Really, this is a one in five chance of getting Sigurd because if you get anyone else, you're going to be pretty happy. But if you're going to get Sigurd, you're going to join the chorus of people going. That last buff to Sigurd was pretty good, but maybe you should buff the entire thing of him. He's still not where he needs to be. Buster Offensive MP4 Calvaries 2, which is, this is a, uh, this features Ivan, this features uh, Summer Nero, this features Semiramis, King Asan, Kintoki, and Morgan. This is a one in sync chance of getting Morgan, which is the reason anyone's going to be summoning on this. If you fail the 50-50, if you see a Golden Berserker and you get Kintoki instead, I would still be pretty happy about it. Um, Kentucky is a very hard hitting berserker, <laughs> and that's been his. Maybe it's just because I'm I'm like counter pill, not counter pill, whatever the word is. I'm brainwashed because I see so many JP videos of him where he's doing like five billion damage somehow, and I'm always just like, how do they get that boy damage so high? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, King, poor King Protea. Uh, the other thing on here is that you're probably going to likely get... The saddest thing you'll probably get here is Semiramis. Um, but again, look forward to that Poison video. Uh, La Costa. 
my brother, he'll explain later. Your words and deeds will mean so much when when this third skill starts to hit, he'll explain it all in a year and a half from now. <laughs> Get ready for the sickest single target and he's gonna do a lot of damage. It's gonna be so much damage, he says. He's huge. And then finally the last one, Buster Offensive NP Extra 2. Um, this is a 1 in 5 chance of getting BB Summer, and if you don't get them, I would still say you'd be pretty happy. I think I've seen from some Abby, I've always gone and said that I think Abby single target is a good unit, but some Abby fans have said to me that they wished she had a little bit more damage. She, like, um, doesn't do enough damage, and even though she has 3 arts cards, she actually doesn't have very good MP gain either. Um... So maybe you'll be bummed out. I think there will be people that will still be happy to get Abby because it's Abby and Abby's a pretty popular character. But yeah, in general, this is a 1 in 5 to get BB Summer for me. Or it really kind of depends on what character you like here the most. Uh, for some people, it will be Amakasu, for some of it will be the other ones. But I digress. And that is the GSSR. Okay, so the video still almost 40 minutes long, still shorter than an hour and 30 minutes. Thank you very much for watching it all the way to the end. Best of luck on your GSSR. Me and my brother will have a video where we do the GSSR and we'll also be summoning on Koyanskaya. I don't have a lot of same quartz left to me, but thank God we're going to get 30 quartz from Login because it's New Year's. And hey, maybe we'll start the new year off with some good luck. I'm going to be summoning on three Calvaries, three Knights, I mean. Um, because it has Muramasa and it has Melusane on it. I, this is really me going for Melusane. Um, I would be ha okay if I got Muramasa. Honestly, at this point, I would probably prefer to get... Mm, I actually don't know. I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch. If I get an NP2 Ryoma, I'll still be pretty okay with it. I will say probably the the main reason that some people will be a little bit angry about seeing Ryoma is that it means that you failed the 50-50 and didn't get Melusane. But I like Ryoma, so I'll be happy <laughs> to get an MP2 Ryoma. And I'll go, oh yeah, that shuts up everyone saying he doesn't do as much <laughs> damage as the four stars. Shut up. No, he's MP2. There's no excuses anymore. <laughs> And that's the end of the video, everyone. I wish you all the best of luck. I will see you guys in the next video, wherever it may be. Until next time, have a good day. Peace out. You got anything, final words to say, boy? All I'm saying is that those challenge quests, they're about to become chump quests when the coaster drops. Am I going to have to increase my my shooting skills then? Because <laughs> I'm going to be the one recording I'm the video. Be honest, no. Okay. But I'm hyping up La Costa. <laughs> okay. Get ready for La Costa. The La Costa hype train starts today in 2023 before we go into 2024. Till next time, everyone. Goodbye.